Union player is the uh, game's first player, and after checking the Confederate hand to make sure they didn't have something, you know, that was clearly an interrupt type card that I'd have to pay attention to, I take a look at the Union hand. And largely we've got a lot of troop creation cards. This one is really not good for anything else. I also have a pair of drafts and something that can build uh, the major navy. I, there's no real reason for me not to play these draft cards. They're free actions, so I'll just get them out of my hand. This is going to let me deploy multiple units um, at once as one action. That sounds pretty enticing given the situation. Okay. So, I have uh, political power in Europe. That's not a big threat right now. I'm going to play my paper money card as my first action. It allows me to deploy two units of my choice from my hand. Uh, this one serves little purpose other than as a deployment card. And huh. what is my next action going to be? That's the question. It's probably going to be a move action. Um, let me get this unit here. A move lets me. Shift, uh, let's just see how it's, where it's worded. I know, I know what it allows me to do. I'm just looking for it. Um, yeah. Uh, it allows me to move one location along one rail link, which is appealing to me right now. Um, and that can be all the units in the hack, in the space. So I could just, you know, march down to Manassas and blast that big unit. That, that's kind of appealing. Uh, one of the problems with units is that I'm not going to be able to get a one-point unit. And you pretty much take losses no matter what, right? Uh, a one unit stack, I could just blunder into here and get lucky. I have a pretty good commander. <laughs> hey, it's probably Winfield Scott <laughs> because it gets me a boat. No, I mean, you know, I, I could commit to either building up uh, the Navy or launching attacks. I don't think that an attack... in the east is necessarily my best move. Uh, I'm not, other than this one good general. So, in order to make decisions, I use die rolls. On a one, I'll go for that eastern gamble. Nah. Because I really don't think that's the best move. Um, this is a pretty good card though. For getting me some serious troops in the line. And I will put them up here at Harper's Ferry. We'll just say everybody's in the front hex. It doesn't really matter. See, this is the thing. It only matters with the damn forts uh, initially, as far as I can tell. But I, I just don't know. Okay, so this card is gone, and the two-pointer, if I'm not going to be crossing here, I kind of don't even really need to even defend Washington. I'm going to put this second unit here. These cards are gone from the game because I played this. That's one action. 
I got one more action. I really should have created this, but... Yeah, you know what? Yeah. See, the thing is, I hate giving up that good general. But I don't know, boats may all be good generals. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take this back. Yeah. Nah, I'm going to I'm going to deploy the army. I hope I didn't put them somewhere stupid cuz I will not understand if he's somewhere dumb. Okay. I am going to launch my attack into the valley. I'll play this card as a movement card. And I bring these two in here. That gives me a five. Do I want to play a leader? Sure. Uh, I'll play this as my leader card. Okay. Well, we're down three already. So unless I have a three general, and I have some, I'm going to have issues. I think I'm going to try to defend. And I'm trying not to remember what the exact numbers are. So I play here. We end up, and again, this is not a game to solo. <laughs> we end up with a seven, five, six, seven. It's a tie. The defender wins. The attacker loses half his units rounded up and retreats. He did not get the space. Now the defender could have withdrawn if he felt overwhelmed. Again, if I didn't have a good card. I replenish my hand with three cards. Now, I used two draft cards and still ended up with a big draw out of that. Now we go over to the Confederate turn, and I look at my hand. All right. Let me hold on. Okay, what do I do here? Well, I got a good general that I'm going to lose. I got an even better general. I'm going to play my cotton bonds, allowing me to deploy two units. And I am going to deploy... The fort and a one-point unit. I'll put the fort. I want to put it here to be uh, more uh, historically accurate. But honestly, I think a fort at Nashville is more important. Because the idea here is to try and protect Atlanta. Okay, this card is gone. That can't come back. It's not a one-point unit. This extra one-point unit... <laughs> I'll put it up here. I don't have a general. I don't think I'm allowed to attack. <laughs> but I do have a move. Uh, gosh. I think... Uh, I think I may just pass. Let me, let me see what would have happened. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at the cards trying to figure out if that cotton card was a good idea. Yeah, I basically don't have a card to be able to attack with. I'm assuming I can't attack without a card. I'm also assuming it's probably a pretty dumb idea. And we come back over to the Union. Now, the Union has 
has nothing special sitting there. Oh, uh, my boat has become less interesting to me, like, because I have to discard two cards to play it. I will discard this to build a one point unit. It's not good for anything else. And drop that over here. Garrisoning me better. I've been kind of stymied here. Uh, what else could I do? This is a very good card. Um, Do I want to bank that boat, or do I want to build more troops? I'll discard two cards to get myself the boat. Yeah. It's a long-term prospect thing. That gives me four more cards. Let me just make sure I don't have any interrupts. That's what I've got to keep an eye out for. There aren't a lot, but... Okay... I forgot to do something. Um, after you win a battle... Losses impact... The... You're up track. A number of spaces according to the number of losses uh, by the losing player. Uh... That would be one piece, so that would be down one. Okay. It's important because I'm considering, you know, do I want to work on Europe? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I could launch a large attack. I think it is an interesting concept. I'm going to play this card, discard these two, this is getting rid of a good card, I'm going to put a big unit there, build an army in the west, then I'm going to play a move to attack in and I don't know what the hell happens <laughs> in terms of placement there. Uh, and this is my attack card. Now, does the Union have a good defense card? They really do. I'm going to go for the defense. So the Union has a 6 defense. The Confederacy has a 4, 5, 6 attack. The Confederates lose. They're pushed back. This goes one back. These cards are all discarded. Then the Confederates get a new five card hand. Hold on. So <coughs> the Union is ready to build themselves what they want. I don't have a lot of movement cards, unfortunately. I'm going to build a three-point army up here. I have to discard two cards. I'll do these two and get rid of that card. And now I have my move, my attack, and I'm coming in. Remember, this is at plus one. You gotta keep an eye on that. That's that's not where the last battle was, and there's not one here. Okay. Yeah. That's why splitting the pieces is annoying. Okay. What's our defense look like? We've got three, four. I've got a good card. What is rail movement? Two units to any location you're legally connected to. Great. Um. 
I'm going to defend, taking advantage of the defensive terrain. So I am a seven. The union is a five, six, seven. It is again. <laughs> um, a one point victory. And in my head, I can't keep track of those numbers. I'm trying not to add them, think about them, whatever. Which is important because if you can't avoid that, okay, high ground, move two units to any location you are legally connected to, high ground. Play before leaders have been revealed, add two to your total if you are the defender. Okay. Well, that's a useful thing to remember. Only a defensive card. Um, but not to remember too hard, because a four-point general is a hard thing to pass up. A one-point general, on the other hand, not so hard. Place this here. Do I want to launch an attack? Or do I want to use my rail movement to shift a bunch of units? I don't have a bunch of extra units. So I am going to, once again, attack in the west. He's got a three, no bonuses. But I got a couple of things going in my favor. I've got a big four-point leader in this high ground, and I'm counting on winning with that. Okay, so we've got four, seven, three, four, five, nine. Again, a victory. And we push them back. And the Confederates took their two actions. You can see there's a certain pattern to all of this, isn't there? Um, Cav raid, that can be played as a defense reinforcement. Play before leaders have been revealed, one of your units in battle. Oh, this is the one, yeah. So these are all kind of battle cards. I should just not look. Okay, I need to relight a really good time for me to take a little break. But let's take a look at what's happened. So far, very little. Uh, Confederates built a fort. We had a few pushes across the border that got repulsed. One naval point made here. No victory points in the Union's hand. They got to worry about that. Their deck's not too small yet, but um, we got to make some ground. And on the other hand, the Confederacy is at their strength, and they haven't made any ground either. Now, Historically, they really didn't make an incursion up into one of these areas. And is it that valuable to do so? I mean, I'm giving up defensive ground right now um, across these. Not so much here. Uh, this is the most appealing because it can start getting me that Gettysburg route up into Washington. Uh, of course, the Union built that up right away, and I haven't been launching battles in the East at all. Uh, which I also find kind of interesting, except that uh, I'm so conditioned by other American Civil War games that I kind of don't try to push too hard in the East. Uh, here we are at Lincoln. We've got... The Union, with a reduced hand, must have been attacked. Uh, it's another day, you know. And I got two actions. I got a rail movement. I could up the blockade. That gives up a great card. Or use that for naval movement. Which could let me hit a port if I want it to. <sighs> well, I think one thing I'm definitely going to do is play that shitty card 
and get myself a second unit there. That just absorbs losses for my good unit. But what do I want to do? Do I want to advance into an attack? Um, I could use this as my movement. I have a pretty good attack card. Uh, other option would be to up my blockade. If I can get my blockade far enough, I'll make the end of the deck points. And that's something that I think can't be taken away from me. I don't really like killing a good card, but it seems the safer choice across the board. Plus, that gets me a whole new hand to draw. And I'm going to stop peeking at hands. That way I have less information that might persist in my head. It doesn't do so very well. Hold on. I'm looking at the Confederate hand. And I've got a new family, by the way. I don't know if you can... Over on this side, it's harder to see them. <coughs> And it's a long walk for me to get around and peek into their nest. And, you know, it's just robins again. But they built their nest just a couple days ago. I'm assuming eggs are being laid, although they're making a lot of noise right now, rattling my house. Anyway, um, I've got some nice cards here. The reinforcements, which allows me, uh, either as an attacker or defender, to shift a unit so I could like pull over here from Manassas over to here if I'm attacked or something like that. That's not as good as the sheer leadership value of that card. I also have a cav raid which could allow me to um, force the Union to discard a card. Again though a good leader I don't know if I want to do that. Both of these this is not uh, this is an action. The rail eh. That's for mass, that's for shifting the, the axis of your attack, basically. And I don't have enough units to justify that. The question is, do I have enough units to launch an attack somewhere? Oh, that's, that's a rough call, man. And I got a lot of these five-point leaders I could hold. Um... I don't really think that I do have enough units to justify the attack. Forcing the Union to discard doesn't really help me if I have nothing that I'm doing. Getting a decent unit might. <laughs> So what do I do? Well, I definitely should be increasing the size of this. How weak is the union here? Yeah, I just don't feel like... So I could build a decent unit here and launch an attack. And I would have five to his four. But my reinforcements wouldn't help me. Uh... As an alternative, I see these guys in Washington are threatening Manassas, so I don't really want to weaken that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a one-pointer in here. Strengthen my defenses. As long as he's leaving that three there, I'm in some kind of trouble. I am going to spend this two-pointer. He's not that good. And where am I going to put him? Uh, yeah, see, I don't know. Maybe instead I want another one-pointer down here. These are all good cards, though, for me. Let's spend that two-pointer, get rid of this card, and put another unit here in the west. 
I'm still at five, so I get three more cards. Weather has brought all my little friends out. I saw deer today. Now I got the squirrel. We got the new uh, the new family moved in. Pretty exciting. Help me ignore <laughs> life as I'm used to doing. All right, what's up with the union? So I got some troop creation, some of which doesn't hurt me much at all. I got some movement. I kind of like the pattern of create troops, move troops for an attack. Uh, however, <laughs> my numbers are not positioned as well as I would like. Um, what I'm not seeing is anything that lets me do a naval attack, which is something I would kind of like to do. Here we're facing a 3-1. I don't have to reinforce this if I don't want to. Here, I might be able to push down against something. You know, if I, if I cause losses to the Confederates, I'm causing losses that are not replaceable because they spent a card to get that two-point unit. And I will cost losses to them. <laughs> Uh, so that seems like an attritional move of some value. So what we will do is we're going to build a two-point card, and what are we going to what are we going to use to get him out of there? I don't have a good leader, unfortunately. I will lose the battle. Can I afford to lose battles? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I can launch an attack. Um, but I could launch an attack down here at Fort Monroe if I had a boat. Damn it. Oh, uh, shit. I could flex my muscles harder going into here. So if I use a rail movement instead of building a unit. I could shift this big three down there. Then I'd be at seven to five. That gives me a two point bonus. Uh, I'd be a plus four. But if I lose, I lose two units and one of them would be a good unit. That's my problem. And no, I'm trying to ignore the fact that I know he's got good leaders, but I know he's got better leaders than I do. And that's the problem that I can't really afford uh, to just flex my muscles everywhere. Ha! Huh. All right. Yeah. Let's play a two-point card. Uh, let's discard this crap. And put a two-point unit here. I don't feel too threatened here. If you put another three-point unit there, that would be painful, but otherwise I've got a little bit of an advantage. So I'm going to put a one-pointer here. That'll position me so I can do a naval attack if need be. And draw a handful of cards. And this card is out of the game. the rebels okay I got the high ground um, that's a two-point bonus to combat in addition to a leader Wow I can win a defensive fight very easily I got reinforcements that allows me to shift a unit which could be valuable on either of these defensive st structures I like that card I've got a good leader card <laughs> and then <laughs> what do I have left? I don't have two cards that I particularly want to get rid of. That's the problem. And as long as I can play out that deck, I'm in pretty good shape. So what I 
So I have basically two choices. I can launch an attack here where I'm going to cause more damage than I take. And that's appealing. Um, and in order to launch that attack, what would I do? Well, his strength is four. I'd want to be close to that. I'd want to have that. Which really means a three-point card to go into play. Uh, I'd have to discard two cards that are good. <sighs> I think what I want to do is I'm going to trash this card, which I consider not as valuable. I discard one card. I get a two-pointer there. That strengthens my position in that location. And I am going to actually pass because I've got such a good defensive hand here that I don't think the Union can do much. Now, the Union ought to keep that in mind. If the Confederates are passing, that means they are ready for me, right? So it's going to be really unlikely for me to launch an effective attack easily. Which may be a reason to try to get a victory point off of this. Now, unfortunately, this is a naval action card, which... Yeah, they keep coming up with the blockade at the same time. And... You know, I, th I think I can win this. So what happens if I want to launch that? Well, see, no, I only have one boat card. That's the problem. It takes two to safely launch an attack here. If I only send one unit in, I had damn well better win the battle. And with him holding his cards, I don't think that can happen. So we will discard... Uh, You're saying, well, why are you discarding? We will discard these two in order to move the blockade. We got one of our two victory points. And for the other card, do I need, I need a one point army here to take losses with. We're running close on that deck call, though. Okay, so we've delayed as well, and that puts it to the Confederates, who have pretty much the same hand they had before. I could try to reduce the blockade. That does not seem like a terrible choice. Uh, as long as we're delaying things, what do I want to get rid of? I think the Cav Raid and this are my best choice. I drop the blockade back down, building some ironclads or something, and again, I'm going to pass. I'm in a good defensive position. I don't really want to do anything. I could play this and, and, and increase my defenses somewhere slightly. But I don't think that's wise. And we'll place that there. And I don't know. I was kind of hoping to get to the end of the deck on this first video. But I think I'm going to load it up. Because it seems like a good time to pause for a bit. Because we're kind of in a stasis position, right? Both sides are building up for either offense or defense. Um... The Union feels a little bit safer. The Confederates threw away a good leader. Um, they may still have a decent hand, but at least I have a chance at this point, I think. We'll see. Up it goes.